let's talk about the best laptops in 2018. All right, champs, let's get rid of Windows Home and let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. New codes, new discount. You can get Windows Professional Office. Paste my code. Boom, it's Windows Pro time. So if you're new around here, come on, sub up, get on the Woo train. I really appreciate that. So when it comes to laptops in 2018, I've just got to say, wow. I mean, the standard is so high now. Everybody has raised their game. The bar has been lifted. Now, when I formulated my list of the best laptops in 2018, it's important to me that I just don't pick my favorite. If I pick my favorite, I'll just pick an XPS 15 or a MacBook Pro 15. I sort of impose some arbitrary sort of rules that if possible, it has to be like a new laptop, meaning, you know, not an older laptop with just a spec upgrade, but you can't always have that. And also it has to sort of set a new standard or disrupt the market. So anyway, let's get into it. Let's get into ultra portables, 13, 14 inches, you know, your thin and light laptops. And yeah, there's so many good ones. But when it come down to it, I sort of had like three or four that I thought were contenders and they were the Surface Book 2, the XPS 13, the MacBook X Pro and the MacBook Pro 13 inch. What I like about the XPS 13 is the white one. It looks so beautiful. One of the best designs on a laptop, no doubt. And the i5 in that, like it screamed, like it performed as good as some other laptops with an i7 using the same processor. Also, the MacBook Pro non-touch bar was my favorite, but now you can only get the touch bar version if you want the quad core. And the MacBook Pros are always solid. And I think probably the MacBook Pro has the best display if you're talking about for content creation that wide color gamut and it's a tall display and on a 13 inch that matters but in the end the surface book 2 and the MateBook x pro were the ones that really got me excited because they had graphics cards both of them but overall i gave it to the MateBook x pro because you know it was thinner and lighter than the surface book 2 even though the surface book 2 does have more tricks being able to take the screen off but also the surface book 2 doesn't have thunderbolt 3 which i think is like required in you know 2018 i think you need a thunderbolt 3 and the MateBook X is just phenomenal. The display is phenomenal. Nice size. It's the perfect bridge in between a 13 and a 15 inch laptop. That graphics card gives it the oomph. Yeah, it's not the most powerful graphics card in the world, but it's still a hell of a lot better than having integrated graphics. The sound is phenomenal too. There's a lot to like in this and yeah, that is definitely the best ultra portable. So when it comes to 15 inch laptops, I'll separate the two thin ones. Like you've got the thin premiums and then you have the thin gaming laptops. For sure, if I'm going to pick which one I'm going to buy, it's, it's going to be the XPS 15 or a MacBook Pro. They're my two favorite, but this isn't about my favorite. And also I like to give props. The ZenBook Pro that actually had the second display in the trackpad, that's some great innovation there, but it falls short in a lot of other areas. Even Lenovo have entered into this market with their Carbon Extreme, which has come out to sort of mix reviews. Even like Gordon Mahome, he said, yeah, it's not quite there and I will be reviewing that early next year, but, but based on other reviewers that I trust, yeah, it's not quite there. But the one that stood out to me and like redefined the market of the 15 inches, the XPS 15 2 in one, the uh, 9575, because now, you know, a digital artist was stuck with these like 13 inch laptops or Surface pros and stuff like that now you've got a full fat 15 inch laptop that's nice and thin with an awesome 4k display artists are going to love this you can video edit on it you can game on it it's freaking awesome you could include the surface book 2 sort of thing here as well but the thing about the surface book 2 no thunderbolt 3 and it does use the 15 watt cpus which you know in a 15 inch laptop yeah i want the 45 watt parts so I'm going to have to give it to the XPS 15 2-in-1. So when it comes to the thin premium gaming laptop segment, yeah, I've just made a video on this. So check out that video comparing the Aero 15, the Razer Blade 15 and the Alienware M15. And I had to say, it was so friggin' close. The only reason I discounted the Aero was that trackpad. It just wasn't as good as the others. It's like a toss of the coin. Like, seriously, they are all good. I love the Razer, but I would love the white one. And I can't get the white one here, so that's a bit of a disappointment. And with the Alienware, that's like the king of cool, right? And it performs a bit better than the Razer. So then you have the Zephyrus, which performs the best out of all of them, but it's not great for daily laptop usage. You know, the battery life isn't as good. And 
Yeah, it is a little bit heavier too. So honestly, the winner out of here would probably be between the Razer and the Alienware M15. I would personally buy the Alienware just because of that support I'm going to get. I know I'm going to be backed by Dell support, but taking support out of it, just talking the best laptop, I could see you easily getting the Razer in this regard too. So take that for what you will, but yeah, I would probably go the Alienware. Now, when it comes to best gaming laptop overall, if you want the best gaming thing, usually I just recommend, you know, go get a Alienware, the 17 inch with the GTX 1080. That's going to be the best. But the two best gaming laptops I reviewed this year, and this means just for gaming, I don't care about how good the battery life is, portability is, and stuff like that. And my two favorite gaming laptops for this year was the Zephyrus MG501. Friggin' amazing laptop. GTX 1070 gets the maximum performance out of it, runs cool, it's thin, it's light for a full-on gaming laptop, and the Aorus X7 DT V8. Man, that thing was friggin' powerful. I actually said in my review it was too powerful. And what I meant by that is it had a 1080p display and it needed a 1440p display. It was that powerful and had no throttling. It was just a friggin' amazing gaming laptop. Had a 7850H. It was a great gaming laptop. You want to check that out. So I guess that wraps it up. They're my top picks for the best laptops in 2018. Let me know what you think are the best laptops. One thing I took out of this is... The difference between the best and say the third or fourth is like minimal. You could go either way depending on use case scenarios, etc. So if you're getting one of the top three laptops in either segment, you're getting a fantastic laptop. And yeah, the only downside is the prices are creeping up. That is what it is. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this video, come on, sub up, give me a like there. And until next time, guys, tally ho.